Michael Carney. And uh, uh, every time I try to humiliate myself by showing a lot of certifications that I have uh, so that people can criticize me on how much money I have wasted on them. So I'm getting used to it and every time I want to show more and more of them. <laughs> we, I think we saw uh, a really humorous uh, you know, presentation today morning. So, um, but yeah, I have done it many times. So, so that's, yeah, it's just a one way of learning. Uh, I don't believe in it either. So, okay, uh, let's start with the real topic uh, and about why scaling uh, or one size doesn't fit all. Uh, how do we select scaling agile framework? All of you are here for the same purpose? Okay, thank God. All right, so moving on. Isn't this the real question? To the point, straightforward. Which framework is good? Which is the best, probably? What's common sense, which is very uncommon, but yes. <laughs> Any, yeah, so that's probably, this is what everybody's asking for. Isn't it, uh, question is similar to this? You know, uh, maybe, do we have, uh, can we buy shoes which are universal, anybody can wear it, just, just order it and go work? Or maybe clothes or shoes or take anything? <laughs> Why do we have the t-shirt size option when we registered for the Agile conference? Instead of planning, okay. It wouldn't have been easy to just order a t-shirt size which will for fit everybody. For a, from a manufacturing point of view, it's, it's very easy, right? How hard it is for the organizers to, to get the real data and uh, hope that people will come and take the t-shirts exactly what they said on the registration form. Is it easy? I think you are spot on. Even people have various definitions of what Excel means and large means and all. Uh, and this is where exactly I'm going to take you through. Uh, so one thing we all agree, right? That one size, one size doesn't fit all, at least as of now. Yeah? Okay, so let's start questioning. So I have this shopping cart uh, that we all can look into and see uh, what, what uh, shopping we can do. So there are a lot of frameworks out there for shopping. Uh, any guesses? Less, safe, Nexus, Scrum Alliance, is, is that really a scaling framework? Safe, yeah, I got safe and less. Lean. Spotify, okay. Any other? Dad, dad, daddy, okay. Any other? Okay. I'll give you uh, some shopping cart list. Uh, now the thing is like Amazon and Flipkart and any other shopping cart, the new products keep coming into market. So you have a lot of options to choose from, right? So, so we have so many, uh, and uh, don't ask me a definition of every, each one of them. Uh, but some are popular and some came and went away and some are still coming and so on. So we have Safe, Less, Nexus, Spotify, lot of debates on whether it's really a framework or a culture, or can you really follow Spotify model? That, I think great session from Scott. Scrum at scale, enterprise, Scrum uh, from Mike. And then there are some lesser known uh, frameworks out there. Slim, which is uh, Scrum and Lean in Motion. And uh, we have another called Scare, which is not opposite of Safe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, uh, it means, I think, uh, 
sustainable cultural agile for release in enterprises sounds uh, exciting but and fast agile i don't know if there is any slow agile anywhere but maybe if it is and many more coming as such uh, i think uh, while i was reading many of this uh, i thought why not come up with my own uh, though that also is a stolen idea because people have presented on diy framework also anybody knows diy do it yourself uh, so that option was also not open for me so i came up with a new one called usa usa and by the way it had nothing to do with politics you know that would be a really dangerous framework <laughs> <laughs> now looking at what is going on <laughs> so usa is universal scaling agile framework uh, but you know what that will contradict to my topic one size doesn't fit all so let's back out from that plan let's not go there okay as of now i don't have any idea whether such a framework can be created but as agilist we should always challenge our own assumptions right so it's an it's a journey so we'll see someday in future something may come up so uh i think we have seen lot of this already uh this is a big picture from sif and so big picture from less and there are so many and that is really not my objective to explain the framework so anybody had that expectation that i would talk about different frameworks then i'm sorry that was not the intent and because that will not help because even if i do that i will just pass on my perspectives and what i think is good for you and i'll make decisions for you which is not fair right agree with me yeah so what what is value adding then what what do you think is is the best way the question is still the same how to select scaling agile framework or maybe something beyond that as well but let's keep it simple for a while okay so let's let's go into that so this is the last uh, discussion on framework we'll end it here and then really get into uh, basics okay and we'll start with stupid question for this audience really uh, huh? yeah the question is <laughs> stupid question for yeah. so so many intelligent people in this room but uh, let's make it short just one word uh, just shout out whatever comes to your mind when i say 1 2 3 what is agile is the question 1 2 3 adaptability more okay quick value adaptability mindset culture feedback these are the keywords that i heard fail early respond to change respond to change yeah so uh, okay so i think we got it there are uh, so i think everybody knows all the words but what you said first was more important to you probably because that is what comes to your mind when you ask for an instant reaction right another stupid question what is scaling what is it oh, sorry increasing the dimension okay in what direction could be horizontal could be vertical okay moving the bar up okay again somewhere on the line of vertical scaling taking along all taking along all to take everybody along with you what do you think on a larger scale so whatever you were doing do it 10 times or 20 times or so on any other answer replicate basically whatever you are doing replicate any other flow improve the flow okay to go beyond the limitations okay that's a different perspective try one size for all try one size for all <laughs> try yeah okay let's put these two things together 
And now let's talk about what scaling agile means to you. Now that's not a stupid question, it's a really hard question. Uh, but that's what we are trying to solve. Right? Right, both the words which you used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that simple though? Because if it was, we would have had a life which would be so simple, you know? So sailing agile means a lot of things to a lot of people. It is, and it's a combination, okay? Whatever you are doing, you do it for 10 teams, 100 teams, that is also scaling. If you are doing a little bit of uh, agility in some teams and you're trying to scale it at beyond your functions from development to services to support to finance to HR, that's also scaling. If you are doing it in one business unit and you want to try it to a different business unit, that's also scaling. If you are doing it in your software division and you also want to try it out for your hardware, that's also scaling, isn't it? Yes. Any other combinations or thoughts that are coming to your mind? If I have not covered the thought that you had in mind, what scaling agile means? Does that cover pretty much? Having an inter organization to work towards single goals. Or vision. Or vision. Alignment. Alignment. Yeah, so scaling agile means lot of different things to different people, isn't it? Right? So we don't have a single shared understanding of what scaling agile would mean to you. Right? So your expectations are different, right? Okay, so let's take a step back now. Before we try to understand what scaling agile uh, would mean to you, let's understand what all type of organizations are there out there. Okay, let's say first, how many, how many organizations would be there on this planet? Millions? Yeah? yeah. Right, so, okay, so we cannot think about everything. Let's just condense all that to only people in this room. Let's say we have 50 people in this room. So let's, let's talk about whatever comes to your mind. So all organizations are not the same. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so if you agree, then the next question is, how would you differentiate one organization from another? So what comes to your mind? Size. Size, size what do you mean by size? Size of, the size of the organization in terms of what? Turnover is one factor. Employees. Industry. Number of employees. Number of employees. Practices, practices of, uh, you mean the processes to deliver the output? Okay. Core competencies, uh, te technical, functional, technical, okay. Services versus product, nature of the work, culture, startups, enterprises, and what's in between? Small scale and medium scale, yeah? Anything else? Vision, okay? So vision would be different for each of the organization. So all are not going in the, in the same direction. Anything else? What value they create and what What value they create. So everybody is creating a different value. Uh, so products are different maybe, solutions are different. Uh, risk appetite of an organization is different. Customer base is different. What else is different? Leadership, okay. Yeah, USP of each organization is different. Strategy of each organization is different. Purpose of existence itself is different. Yeah, social cause, profit making, something different. Yeah? All right, so there are lots of lots of things. Uh, let's compare. Uh, one thing that is, you know, uh, maybe close to many people's heart, hierarchy or number of levels. So uh, how many of us, you can raise your hand, uh, how many of us have uh, work in an organization where there are three levels between the entry level person and the CEO? Three or lesser? Okay, one person. Seven, three to seven. Entry level to CEO, okay, okay. 
सेवन टू फिफ्टीन में भी सो आई मीन दथिंग इज गुड और बैड और एटलीस्ट आई डोंट हैव डेटा टू प्रूव एनीथिंग विच इज गुड और बैड बिकॉज देर इज अ रीजन वाई दिस स्ट्रक्चर्स एग्जिस्ट सो एंड दैट्स नॉट द टॉपिक ऑफ द डे एज वेल बट इज एन दैट अ फैक्टर या सो इफ आई से दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोफाइल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वेयर दिस फ्रेमवर्क वॉज इम्प्लीमेंटेड एंड वी हैड दिस सक्सेस स्टोरी वेयर देर इज ओनली दिस टाइप ऑफ वर्क डन सो गो एंड इम्प्लीमेंट वुड यू बाय दैट वुड यू बाय दैट जस्ट बिकॉज इट इज सक्सेसफुल समवेयर एल्स एट लीस्ट एज ऑफ नाउ वुड यू बाय दैट नो राइट राइट ओके so i think we talked about most of them let's see if we missed out any levels product services small scale large scale distributed co located uh, the type of structures matrix functional or what you call this red orange green and tail type of organizations and domains healthcare banking insurance and blah 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 skills technology some are working on legacy systems some are web technologies yeah everybody is working on different <coughs> profile right so that is one of the reason why one size doesn't fit all that is one of the problem we have that we cannot just borrow something that is working at some place and just take it for granted that it will work so what are let's let's start from somewhere on how the decision making can be done does that make sense so it, instead of just being into that problem situation that we don't know what to do how to do let's start step by step and see how we can make those decisions now again these are the experiences that i have collected by talking to some people from different profiles like we discussed some people from service industry and product companies and enterprise level and you know across the different locations and people from different profiles and so on but that doesn't mean that i know everything that is going out on this planet agree so i am going to give you something which is a starting point for you to think and we can build on it fair enough yeah okay so first of why are you going for scaling agile framework right every time before we start solving this problem we should always question why are i even why are we solving this problem in the first place don't we have a, uh, a more important problem to solve so definitely there must be a reason why you are trying to scale right and some of it we discuss we may have challenges with scaling or rather growth communication or complexity or the legacy that you are carrying there are various reason i talked to one person i was interviewing him on why you went for this and he said because i am a services person uh, uh, coming from a services organization and nowadays the clients are asking that you have to run this project in a this particular methodology and you need to have these many certified people on this framework then only you can bid for this project simple straight forward so the reason is i'm going for this because that will give me my bread and butter anything wrong in that no so because in that context we don't know how can we make decision for that person he only knows what is what is good or what is bad and some product development company will say we want to do it because we want to get awesome results by coordinating and uh, you know scaling the success pattern we tried in a small team it worked really great now we want to amplify the results that is why we want to go for scaling again a fair answer in that context yes does that question make sense to you purpose is very important than anything else right so then the next questions are fair enough which framework we can use and you can go to that shopping cart or maybe there are some things in between and then you go to the shopping cart so we will take a step by step approach where do we start the implementation so if you are an enterprise of uh, thousands of people 
uh, would you try a big bang approach or select a pilot program or a pilot business unit or a small 200 people 300 people group which is uh, you know uh, you can call them guinea pig or you can call them they are willing to accept changes as compared to the rest of the organization whatever it is yeah so that is one strategy right where do we start or how do we start the implementation the next question that comes is tools if i select this approach do i need to buy additional tools or will my existing tool work with this approach and you ask a question on top of it do we really need tools because that question exists only even at a basic level does scrum need a tool xp anybody has prescribed any particular tool no right even for product backlog people say you can have it on a physical uh, wall if you are co-located some people use just excel or some kind of spreadsheet and some people use whatever you have, rally and jira and version one and so on right so tools are needed or not was a question at that level also so similarly can we scale our implementation with the existing tools or do i need to look for a compatible tool as such uh, and any other organizational aspects uh, some of which we covered like culture and your organization structure uh, your appetite for taking risk and maybe how much you are willing to invest in making this decision is that a factor if something takes one thousand dollars versus one million dollars is that a factor yes like anything else right like like any buying any other tool or maybe even buying chairs and your office furniture and everything else sometimes these are also the questions that you should ask if you are really making a decision let me ask you a question how many of you uh, are either decision makers or an, have an ability to reach out to the decision makers can you raise your hand okay so quite a few in this room right and these people is let's assume that you are not the real decision maker but you are you can definitely influence people so we need to guide those decision makers to start asking these questions right asking a, a right question is more important than finding a solution and that is where i am taking you through okay so some more criteria that i have collected from talking to some some people uh, from various groups uh, is it suitable for my type of organization structure if i have 11 to 15 level of hierarchy uh, versus no roles uh, i think uh, roles roles is a big challenge because i did a dedicated session on role of managers in agile few days back and uh, i could see that reaction from people that it's one of the point to make decisions people want to see themselves in that big picture somewhere so they they will first try to find out if i implement this framework what will i become and why is that huh bread and butter, bread and butter yeah safety security whatever it is and what happens if they don't find a solution then how will your agile implementation go which path it will take success failure resistance at least yes i need some response okay it will have some resistance right so uh, it's probably uh, not uh, feasible to define every role in every agile framework or on some sessions we have seen that why even define the roles why do we need roles at all and all that so again great ideas and great thoughts by so many people what you have to do is that is the this framework is taking me through this ideology but my organization is at this maturity level so is that a best fit if not go for something else make sense yeah so it's not necessary that we have uh, 
uh, having roles is bad or not having roles is really good. It's all based on your context of if you want to go for implementing any scale agile, then uh, uh, what, what are the options they are uh, providing you? Other aspect is only software development or you are trying to look at scaling it in other areas. So we talked about horizontal scaling also. So uh, anybody face challenge while implementing or replicating your success patterns across other functions outside of software development? Do you have functions outside of software development? We have to, right? The organization doesn't run only on software development. <laughs> yes, so every organization has it. So isn't this a factor? That is the framework helping me to, to connect the dots of how do I scale horizontally? Yes? Okay, who? Training needs. If I say you, this is the handbook, I have printed it for you, go study and implement. And from next Monday, you're going to be scaling your agile. Will that work? Will that work? No. For some teams, uh, some may say, yeah, I can do it myself. That is why the DIY framework works. Because some people are just uh, you know, enthusiastic enough to do it yourself. Uh, they'll figure it out based on some guidelines. How many pages we have in the Scrum Guide? 16, 17, 13, yeah. If you take the title page and the reference page and some things in out, then 13 to 14 pages worth of knowledge, that's it. So people, some teams are able to figure it out by looking at those and some teams need a two days certified Scrum Master training or maybe whatever PSM training and some people want even more than that. So they'll call people like us. Yes? Happens or not? Happens, right? points that whatever I do, finally I'm going for, I'm looking for some value, right? Nobody does something just because they don't have anything else to do, right? If you are, if you are looking for scaling framework or trying to solve a problem that will be solved through scaling agile, then you are expecting something in return and one of the first one that comes to my mind is value. But now what type of value I'm talking about? Value means what? Huh? Value for customers, yeah, that's one perspective. Value for organization is also important, right? Value for the people who are actually doing the work, that is also important. And finally, the bottom line, the dollars, right? Or whatever currency, profit, that's also important, right? So whatever I do, uh, if somebody says you'll get this return on investment in several years from now, will that work? Will your executive leadership allow you to experiment something for several years? Probably not, yeah? Simplicity, uh, when you go for implementation irrespective of what you choose, you can try to keep the implementation simple not to try it waterfallish. Now, what do I mean by this? Taking a big bang approach. Taking a big bang approach is not a good idea uh, in many cases. The other thing is, uh, should be acceptable by all. 
the other thing is you know we have a habit of change management process you know let's try to figure out everything you know we want to plan everything even for implementing a scale agile model okay which projects will go through this what's the training plan who is going to drive it and what are the checkpoints what day we will start it which projects will kick off with so much of a planning which itself takes let's say 3 months is that agile so scaling agile implementation itself should be agile right we are call ourselves agilist so i think at least we deserve to do a little bit of simplicity and uh implement things in part and not try to be perfect on the right on day one make sense yeah and scaling agile on this journey you uh, some days you will realize that we have over complicated processes and actually it sometimes it means that descaling some of these practices get rid of some things uh probably uh simplify some structures the coordination the way the feature teams are created or some processes that you have in place or let's say decentralized decision making as some framework would suggest so all these are factors that are uh, that need to be thought of in the implementation agree seems like you are agreeing on everything i am saying <laughs> i don't know if it is good or bad okay uh, if you do not have any restrictions like you know a vendor is asking you to follow a particular framework in your contract but let's say if you do not have that situation then anything stopping us from taking the best out of everything why not right let's learn whatever is best is out there and do whatever it makes sense to you and try out uh, things that that you can implement easily now there are other things that uh, you may want to think about uh, because it's not only the process or uh, tool there are a lot of other things workspace design because if you want to go for big bang you may have to invest in certain things uh, team structures now you cannot all of a sudden bring everybody into same office but uh, can you do something and play with your structure so that uh, people at the same location are working on this maybe a, a related functionality so you can minimize all these challenges that you have and come up with a better way of managing dependencies right so maybe no framework may suggest or exactly give you this idea but do we need to think about it when we talk about scaling and in distributed environment then we will need to think about it like how the communication will happen so and sometimes it's possible sometimes it's not so we have other ways to deal with that which we'll talk about on this one so these are the not the only things that that are involved in communication and each of these is not a communication in itself but communication is an important aspect in each of these ceremonies or rituals what do you call isn't it because whenever we do this we basically what we do is communicate right you do a product refinement session you talk about demos you do planning so you are constantly sharing the information and communicating with each other now when you have this complexity of multiple people multiple teams which are distributed across several locations then one of the thinking uh, that we need to bring in is how do we scale those events and some frameworks are giving you this explicit guidelines on how this can be done we just saw in couple of frameworks in sessions and you can find out how other frameworks are talking about it but yes frameworks some frameworks are talking about it and they are giving you the guidelines makes sense okay uh, no scaling no matter what you do on process side and culture side uh, without doing engineering uh, alignment is pretty much useless uh, because when you talk about multiple teams and uh, you know multiple uh, people working on the same products or solutions then we are talking about some discipline and some real technical challenges that's why we just had a great session on devops so 
couple of things like that on how the framework is suggesting you to operate or some frameworks are saying just we just strongly believe in it, but you figure out what works best for you, so which is fair enough. Uh, but I think this aspect is very much important. So if you are going to scale your practices, do think about this first out of many other things, right? Uh, because uh, we are going to end up having challenges when so many people start working on, on uh, multiple projects. Okay, uh, this is a business side, just like we talked about engineering side. Scaling product ownership, management, or whatever name you give, business side of it is also equally important. When you talk about 20 teams working on a product, do, can one person give justice to everybody? 20 teams, 50 teams, no, right? So there has to be some structure on how that coordination will happen and we need guidance on that, like how I can figure out my product management, uh, how, how can I scale my product management uh, practices or how will we coordinate portfolio level and program level and so on, right? So backlog. I think the LES also has a suggestion on this called area product owner in LES huge model. SAFE has it on, a, on, a, on its own way, three levels, four levels, whatever you see. Okay, so that's, I think the point is we need to figure out how to scale the product management. The next thing is the rollout plan. So Big Bang, most of the times doesn't work, it backfired. So it's better to have a rollout plan, but wait, just now we said that too much of a preparation is a bad idea because that will be a waterfallish implementation, isn't it? Then isn't this contradicting that we should have a rollout plan? We should have some plan which we can adopt and change. Yeah, so this is a very lightweight starting discussion. So we need to see, how, do we need to train people? Will they just learn on their own? Or do we need to have a coach available and it can be a, a, a person who is existing member of the team, but somebody who is ahead of the game. Uh, is the team ready? Do they have some other challenges and we are trying to implement something in a wrong team maybe, right? More often than not, if you are trying to implement something, uh, would you select a very challenging project and experiment something with it? No, right? Somebody who is already under fire and you know, already challenged with uh, certain things. Uh, as again, answer I cannot give, but somebody rightly said, risk appetite for your organization will tell you, okay? A pilot program, uh, and then we talked about roles, uh, scaling roles, uh, and every framework will not give you the same answer. And some frameworks will not give you an answer at all, or some will give you a partial answer. So we have to do some homework and figure out, if I have to go for scaling agile, then uh, which one, uh, how, how will it will help the roles that I have in my organization and what do I need to convey? Because I have to take them into confidence, yes? You have to take them into confidence, otherwise it will backfire, isn't it? Okay, so now let's say we are going ahead, now it's the implementation. So when we start implementing and whatever we said we have thought and we started. Uh, living with the agile values, what do we say? Fail early and fail fast. So if you have made a wrong decision, uh, when do you want to know? As soon as possible, right? So how will you know that? Because you need to have some checks and balances on is your scaling going on the right track or not. And how would you determine that? I have given some ideas, but it may not be the only list. You can come up with your own, but you can take surveys, you can talk to people, you can measure some metrics, um, some surveys and so on, and that will help you to figure out, okay? Anything comes to your mind on how we can measure? Okay, all right. Now once you reach to it, what would be the next step? Let's say you are successful at certain level. 
repeat that cycle or take it to next level either vertically or horizontally or both, right? So if you're at program level, you'll try to do it at portfolio level, your business unit, try it in a different unit or try it in your different entity under your same parent organization. If it is typically an enterprise, you will have several, uh, you know, uh, units under it. Okay, when you reach to a much more maturity level, do you think that what we make, uh, if we make a decision today, it will be valid for next 25 years? Not possible, right? Uh, we need to be agile in this thinking also. If we make a decision, and if you get successful at something, then we should try and see, is there a better way to do it? If I made a choice which was good at that point of time, but now I have reached to a different maturity level, so should I explore some different options again? Because if you make a decision and just think that this will just survive for next 25 years, uh, we shouldn't call ourselves agile. Do you agree? Yeah? So I think this is, uh, the last tip I had, uh, but now that we talked so much, any interesting thoughts that came to your mind on, okay, I should ask on this topic also, or maybe we need to question this also. When we select scaling framework, any aspect we missed out? <laughs> 